Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. I was glad when they said, let us go unto the house of the Lord and let us exalt his name together. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are so glad that you have joined us on Facebook Live. We're so glad that you're joining us on YouTube and we're glad to be able to worship with you this morning in spirit and in truth. Let us pray our prayer of invocation. All wise and eternal creator, our Bob Father, Daddy, Mother God, we come before you this morning, oh God, just to say thank you and to say that you're welcome in this space, you're welcome in our hearts, you're welcome in our minds. Have your way in this worship experience, oh God, that we will leave this place and this experience not like we came, but excited to run on to see what the end is going to be. It is in the marvelous, the magnificent, and miracle working name of Jesus Christ, our healer, our redeemer, our helper, and our friend that we pray. All of God's children said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Let us worship. Of God who had in truth on today. Come on and pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. Come on and pray. Surely we do worship, celebrate, and give thanks 
unto the Lord for this day. We are grateful for the opportunity to worship in which we come together to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. This is the day, beloved, that the Lord has made and we rejoice and are glad in it. We share with you today. Grateful for all of you who were sharing with us on this morning, on this worship experience that you uh, would share with us virtually as New Calvary Baptist Church continues just to give God glory and to serve God in spirit and in truth. We want you to know how delightful, how delightful it is and how glad we are that you were sharing with us. And we hope and pray that something is said and done that ministers to your spirit today and reminds you just how much God loves you and how much we appreciate you. And no matter where you are, no matter how you are watching us, no matter how you are hearing this message, no matter how you are hearing this worship experience, we hope and pray that you would be reminded that all roads still lead to New Calvary Baptist Church. Amen. We're grateful for you sharing in this moment. We just want uh, to leave a few things with you. Please be mindful in this August month that you are still witnessing and watching and sharing in our uh, Summer Madness Revival uh, greatest hits as we are bringing you some of the best preachers in the country who have shared with us here at New Calvary Baptist Church and so we hope and pray that this season is blessing you richly and enriching your life. Also we just want to thank all of you to continue to be faithful uh, as we can find new ways to do ministry and as we come up and become creative in how we continue to minister to our community uh, and and our, uh, our fellow uh, worshipers and our fellow Christians as we continue to share in this season. We are indeed thankful for all of you. We continue to pray uh, for those who uh, continue to solicit prayer and who continue to need prayer in this season. We are praying. Uh, we are grateful for uh, those who are essential workers in this season and we're asking and praying that God would continue to keep you all safe. Uh, and in well health. Uh, we're going to continue to move forward in this worship experience as we uh, again evoke the presence of the Lord in a word of prayer. Uh, we are continuing to pray for members of the New Calvary Baptist Church who are uh, in many different ways extended from us and from far and near as we share our time together. We're also praying for those members who are sick and shut in. We're praying for those members who even in this season don't have much mobility because they are required, because they are high risk to remain uh, in their places of rest and in their homes. So we're praying for one another today. If there are prayers, if there are concerns that speak to your heart, won't you just put them in the comment section so that our virtual ministers can continue to pray for and lift up and acknowledge your prayers and concerns in the this season. So won't you bow and won't you pray with me in this moment as we go to the Lord in prayer. God, how grateful we are and how we thank you for this moment. How we, God, call upon your name. We call upon you, God, because we know that you are worthy. You're not only worthy of our praise, but uh, you're worthy of our thanks. God, we give you thanks in this moment as we just look back over our lives and we see the places that you have brought us from. We see, God, the changes of uh, this season. We see, God, the changes of our lives. We see, God, situations that need to make adjustments. And God, what we're asking in this moment is that your presence would continue to be with us, continue to strengthen us, lead us, and guide us, God, as only you can. God, we pray for the members of the New Calvary Church who are stretched far and near. We pray for the friends of New Calvary who continue to worship and share with us. God, whatever is going on in their lives, whatever is going on in their households, whatever need needs to be met in this moment, touch them, God, right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you would just continue to watch over us and place that hedge of protection around us that we might be careful in this moment, that we might, God, in all things be protected from this virus, that we might be protected from sickness, that we might be covered, God, in the blood as we continue just to serve and give you glory. 
So God, right now, as we continue to worship, as we continue to thank you, as we continue to go forward, God, whatever is laid on the hearts of your people, we're asking, God, that you would answer. Whatever it is that your people are needing or calling out to you, God, we're asking that you might touch them right now. Touch every family in the name of Jesus. Touch, God, every child and every household in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying right now for every house's finances right now now in the turmoil in the name of Jesus God whatever it is that your people need whatever it is that your people are soliciting God we pray that you would just continue to answer and show up in their situation for we believe God that you are a God that answers prayer we believe God that you are a God that redeems and heals so right now Lord in the name of your son have your way in the life of your people and God, we'll be careful to give your name the praise. We'll be careful to give your name the honor. And we'll be careful, God, to give your name the glory. That God, as we continue to make our way up this mountain, as we continue to make our way in the struggle in this season, as we continue to navigate and to hear your voice and to make our way, we ask, dear God, that you would just continue to lead us and guide us, that our steps might be ordered by your word. And we promise God in all things, we'll say thank you. We promise in all things, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor and we give you the praise for it is in the wonderful, marvelous and matchless name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen, say amen and say amen. Come on, if you will, just put your lights up, put your hearts up as we have our praise and worship team come and lead us and we continue to celebrate and worship in this moment.
For God, how we love you and thank you. How we come in this moment recognizing your presence and your power. Speak to our hearts, dear God, as we continue to go forth in this worship experience. And God, that we might hear from you. That we might be touched. That we might be transformed. That we might be renewed. We are grateful, God, in all things for your power that speaks to our hearts, that ministers to us. We're grateful, God, for the ways in which you show up and you reveal yourself. So, God, right now, touch us in our very secret places. Touch us in those places where we need you the most. Uh, Open our minds and our hearts to be awakened to possibility and newness and life. Touch us, God, that we might be renewed, that we might be refreshed. God, we're asking that that person who is facing life and just seems and feels like they can't get out of bed might might find a new, renewed spirit. That they might just continue to believe that you're walking with them every step of the way. So have your way, God. Minister in this moment. Speak to our heart that we might continue to trust you even more. Bless this, your instrument, for your glory, that I might decrease with thou increases. And in all things we give your name, praise, honor, and glory. It is in the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen and amen. Amen. I call your attention today um, on this Second uh, Corinthians, twelfth chapter. Second Corinthians, chapter twelve, verses seven through ten. You can look at all of chapter twelve when you get a second, but seven through ten will speak to us today. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 10, as it is translated in the New International Version, says, To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, uh, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Uh, Three times, verse 8 says, three times, I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I want to talk about this thought, this idea today um, for a few moments. When you just can't shake it. when you just can't shake it. Um, It was a moment in a movie that most Generation Xers can remember. It is a popular and famous moment uh, in the movie New Jack City uh, when Pookie, played by Chris Rock, the wannabe hustler, finds himself entangled with Scotty, the undercover cop played by Ice-T, and is ultimately brought down only to find himself caught up and addicted to drugs. Pookie is known in the neighborhood and he's understood as a 'er ne'er-do-right addict who is laughed at by those around him, including the drug kingpin, Nino Brown. Ice-T eventually befriends Pookie, and uh, Pookie tells Ice-T these famous words in a moment of distress. Yo, man, 
you got to help me. You got to get me off this stuff, man. It just be calling me and calling me. Ice-T helps him to in a rehabilitation program and gets him clean. But in a desire to pay Ice-T back for helping him, he wants to help bring down Nino. Reluctantly, Scotty agrees and Pookie finds himself in the daily drug operation as a mole. But while he is doing well, he still gets caught up in the temptation of the drugs that are around him and finds himself tortured by the tension of staying clean of the, off of the drug that's calling him. Pookie ultimately takes the drug and finds himself in a situation that is so bad that it gets him killed to the pain and frustration of his policeman friend. It is a scene that many of us have seen over and over again, that you cannot be a part of a certain generation and not know that scene in that movie. And the words are used oftentimes among friends in the jesting about something that we love or seemingly can't control. You can find friends saying, yo, man, it just be calling me. It just be calling me. However, the reality is in the words that Pookie used. Pookie's plea was, you got to help me because it just keeps calling me. Pookie went into what is called relapse in the language of addiction. A relapse by definition is the act of something becoming worse after it was once better. To relapse means that there's a recurrence or regression after improvement. See, when you relapse, it means that you slip or you fall into a worse state. I was doing well, then all of a sudden I'm back to where I started. I'm, I'm in a bad situation. I came out of it, I'm doing well, but something happened and I found myself back worse off than I was. A relapse is a fallback. It's not something we want, it's not something we look for, but it's something that happens when there is something that we just can't shake. And why am I talking to you a bit about relapses this morning? Because the truth is, Pookie and people like him are the only one who experience relapses. The truth is, even people of faith go through some relapse situations. Oh, you can act holy if you want to, but there are some places where all of us find ourselves in some relapse situation. But even those of us who have never had a drug or never sipped or tasted alcohol or even ever taken a pill have experienced some relapses in our lives. The reason I say that is because in this journey of faith, all of us have fallen back at some point or another. All of us have gone back to a certain mindset. All of us have fallen back to a certain behavior. All of us have fallen back to a certain frame of thinking, a place, and even gone back to certain people who meant us no good because we had a relapse. There are places in our faith where we have, had to, we have, we have been strong, when we were doing good, and then all of a sudden something came at us that caused us to think bad thoughts again. Something happened that caused us to not believe in ourselves again. Something happened that convinced us that we couldn't do it or we couldn't make it. Do you know the moments in your life where you experienced a faith relapse? Can you identify the moments in your life where you had a relapse, that you were doing well in the Lord and all of a sudden something happened that you just couldn't shake that brought you back to a place of relapse? Moments when you had moments of spiritual backsliding a time when you went backwards in your faith in God or you retreated back to a bad idea or a bad behavior. There is a spiritual word Paul uses for it in this text. Paul calls it a thorn. Yeah, all of us got them. All of us have the experience. All of us have had something that has gotten the best of us, a person, a place, an idea, a fear, or an ambition that has caused us to resort to our former self that we do not feel good about. But, our con- but God continues, despite all of that, uh, to create moments that even in our relapses to show us that grace is still available. Uh, God reminds us that even with the things that we can't shake, God is still allowing grace to work with us and through us. Paul says that all of us have thorns. 
All of us will experience a relapse from time to time, but God is able to help us recover even in our relapse, that God sustains us even in those places where we can't shake what we're going through. So journey with me in this text and see uh, that even when you can't shake it, you have to acknowledge that something is broken. You, you got to admit, you got to admit it's a great story. Uh, there he is sitting high. He's looking around. His life has been changed. Things are taking place. He's been higher than he's ever been. He was in a bad situation. He was headed in a bad direction and things turned around. He made some accomplishments. He achieved some things. I mean, how really how many people would think that he would get as far as he got? How many people thought that he would get as high in life as he did? But no matter how high he got, there was something, an identified thing that made him fall. With all of his great achievements and accomplishments, his fall made people see just how fragile he really was. Now, I ain't talking about Pookie no more. I'm talking about Paul. You see, Paul tells us in the first six verses of chapter 11 that he was riding high. He tells us that he was doing well. He tells us that he was headed in a bad direction, but God turned his life around. He says that the Lord has given him great visions. The Lord has opened great revelations to him and shared with him the mysteries of the spirit. Paul lets the readers of the church of Corinth know, he says he's encountered with the Lord that there have been second to none. He says he is one of God's chosen evangelists and one of the best at what he does. And who would have thought that this unassuming coat holder for, for the Roman Empire would one day be preaching a message of the very same Savior he was trying to wipe out? And the truth of the matter is that ought to make you shout right there. That ought to make you feel good because God can take what's headed to a place of darkness and turn it around. That you ought to be excited that you ought to give that that ought to give somebody hope today that say to know that God can take what's dark and move it in the wrong direction and do a 180 and put it in another direction headed towards the light. Somebody ought to be grateful and glad that God makes you turns. Um, but, but no matter how high Paul was and no matter how far he had come, no matter how much he had turned that thing around and what he had accomplished, Paul still didn't have it all together. I'm in the text. Look what it says. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassing great revelations that was given to me a thorn in my flesh. Uh, Paul says to keep me from thinking I was all that, to keep me from believing that I had done it myself and to, get too, to keep me from getting too full of myself, uh, I had to have a built-in reality check. You see, something gets at me and I can't help but notice it. That's why he calls it a thorn, because when it sticks me, I can't help but notice. That when it sticks me, I go back into relapse. A thorn, something that gets at me. I know when it happens. I know when it rises up. I know when it gets at me. I know when it's about to start. I know when it wakes me up. A thorn sticks me whenever it comes up. And I know that it brings something out of me. Whenever I feel it, it either upsets me and I lash out and I fight. It can either paralyze me and so I don't do anything about it because I don't know what to do. Or it makes me scared so I run away from everything that I'm afraid to deal with. In short, a thorn is something that you just can't get rid of. Something that you just can't shake. It won't go away just because you want it to. It won't go away just because you've been a Christian all your life. Won't go away just because you're baptized. Won't go away just because you sing in the choir or you preach in the pulpit or you pray every day or you read the text. Won't go away just because you've got a relationship with the Lord. It's a coronavirus that won't leave you alone. It's a lockdown that's issued by the government. It's an addiction that I have to live with. It's a sense of anger that I feel towards my family or somebody who's done something to me. It's an insecurity that I have when I was young. It's a fear that I live with because how I was raised, it doesn't go away just because I want it to. I got to work with it. I got to live with it. I got to navigate from time to time. I got to do something. It's something that I can't get rid of, and it's something that I won't go away. It causes me to relapse. My thorn. Makes me uncomfortable to think about it. I know it's there, but I try to act like it isn't. I try to dress it up like it's not there. I put the makeup on. I put the clothes on to act like nothing is wrong. But there's a thing that gets me sometimes. Uh, other people can see it too. Not only can they see it, but actually 
They can notice when I'm struggling with it. Truth is, people can see your anxiety. They know that your reaction to your anxiety. People don't know what your thorn is, but they can see the expressions of your thorn. They know how your thorn can get at you. you. They might not see the thorn, but they can see how you take your thorn out on everybody else. Paul doesn't specify what his thorn is. He doesn't share what it may be. The scholars suggest that Paul's thorn doesn't have to be a, even a person. It could be a situation. It could be referring to the Canaanites' gods that Paul has been trying to exercise that have been left in Israel. Could have been talking about a false prophet who was in the area because he says it was a messenger of Satan. And see, the reality is everybody got something to deal with. Everybody's struggling with something. Somebody gets angry easily. Somebody may want to avoid confrontation. Somebody may struggle with a debilitating habit. Somebody struggles with being accepted or struggle with low self-esteem. Some people struggle with ego. Some people always got to be right. Some people don't care about anything. Some people struggle with prejudice. Some people are judgmental. Everybody got a thorn that they struggling with. Something that you can't master. Something that you can't manipulate something that you can't conquer by yourself something that causes you to relapse in this course of it all a thorn is something that causes you uh, to act a fool and it don't bring the best out of you see a struggle struggle for many of us particularly in this culture is we're being taught that we don't have to work on anything we don't have to work on anything if people don't like how we are that's just too bad for them so we celebrate our dysfunction instead of recognizing that we got some challenges. We good at picking out other people's thorns. We good at watching other people relapse, but we act like our thorns don't exist. We can't recognize when our thorns cause us to relapse. Paul says, it's come to torment me. I notice it and it keeps me from coming back. It keeps me on coming back. I can't get rid of it no matter how much I pray. I can't get rid of it no matter how much I try. I can't get rid of it no matter how much I worship. I can't get rid of it. But can I help you real quick? You being broken doesn't make you bad. It makes you human. Broken is just a sign of your humanity. It doesn't mean that you're not as good as somebody else because they got thorns too. It means that because you're human, you've got to trust in something bigger than yourself. Trust in the one who can help you with your challenges. Trust in the one who can help you get through your rough places. Trust in the one who can work through whatever you're going through because your thorn is bigger than you, but it's not too hard for God. Your thorn might be a, a, a burden for you, but it's not a burden for the Lord. I believe that somebody in here says even when I can't handle it I'm grateful that I've got a God that's bigger than whatever I'm going through and because I've got a God that's bigger than what I'm going through I'm going to trust God with it all the way. Uh, understand that uh, to understand this thorn thing you got to recognize that uh, you, you have the issue but the second thing is uh, to understand something that you just can't shake God is going to look beyond what limits you. That's kind of eyes God has. God's going to look beyond what limits you. Paul recognizes that uh, no matter how high he got in God, he still struggles. No matter what the Lord has done for him, he still struggles. No matter how many people pat him on the back, no matter how many people tell him he's great, no matter how many people come to Christ from his preaching and his sermons, no matter how many times he knows that he did something well, the minute he tries to get too much of himself, he goes into a relapse. His thorn kicks up and it causes him to relapse. I'm thinking things are all right and then I get some bad news and I have a relapse. I tell myself I'm going to be more understanding and then somebody tries to insult me and then I go into relapse. I say I'm going to go, I'm not going to fly off the handle like I used to. I'm going to try to live differently and then I'm not let my anger get the best for me. And then the woman at the grocery store tries to test me at the checkout and I go back into relapse. I said I'm going to look at things positive and make every situation the best that it possibly can and then they tell me coronavirus is running all through my neighborhood upside and down and I go back into relapse I have this thorn and it causes me to relapse every now and then and that's what the issue is for some of us we can get so lost in our successes we can cherish those moments so much but we can forget that our thorns kick up and we're susceptible to a relapse now now let's be clear about this y'all Paul doesn't like his thorn. He doesn't like the obstacle. He just recognizes that it's there. 
I mean, Paul is saved, but he ain't crazy. Who would like to have a limiting liability in their lives? In fact, Paul asked God to take it away. Look at the text. Three times I pleaded with the Lord. Three times I asked God to take it away. Look, Paul says, I recognize God. I can't shake this on my own. So God, I'm begging you, take it away from me. Three times I tried to negotiate with God about taking this thing away from me. Three times I tried to plead with God to remove it because, look, if you remove it, God, here's the negotiation. If you remove it, God, I can do more for you. If you remove it, uh, that's when we start to think, I could, I, I, could, I could do so much more for you, God, if you take this burden away. If, it didn't, if I didn't have this, I could do a whole lot more. If I didn't have this problem, I could take this on or I could handle this. If I didn't have this, I would be a better example for God. If I didn't have this issue, that I could do so much more for you, Lord. If you took this away and I wouldn't be limited and I would do this for you and I would do that for you, I would live for you, God. If you just took this thing away far, far away, if you just took it away from me, I promise you I'd be the best Christian and follower you ever had. But God didn't give Paul the answer he was looking for. Uh, you know the most difficult thing for us to come to grips with in this walk is that the Lord, uh, God is sovereign. That, and you know, we say it, but to understand it, we say that God is sovereign, but that means God can do what he wanted to. When, when it says, and that means when God can do what God chooses to do, it means God can even choose not to give us what we want. Ah, that's a tough thing to deal with. That's a tough thing to deal with because God is sovereign. That means God is in control and God does what God chooses to do for God's purpose, not for our will. Many of us still haven't caught on to the idea that God doesn't do our will, but we do God's will. And God says no to Paul. He does not give him the answer he's looking for. But even though God doesn't always give a yes, God always gives the best. Look, God says to Paul, even after his petition, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. God says, I can't take the thorn away because if I took it away, then you would expect everything in your life to go the same way. If I took it away, you might think everything would be easy. If you might think that all you got to do is call on me and all your problems would go away. Then you wouldn't know what it meant to trust me when you're in a tight situation. You wouldn't know what it is to wait on me to deliver you. You wouldn't learn how to be calm in the middle of your storm, not panic in your trouble or go crazy in a stressful situation because you would think that it would be my job and responsibility to take care of you no matter what. I can't take it away. Paul because if I did you would never learn what it meant to trust me in the first place and you got to learn how to trust God in the middle of your confusion you got to learn how to trust God despite what everything looks like God said you would abuse me instead of walk with me you would summon me instead of talk with me you would glance over me instead of take time with me you would lose me when you would take a minute to find me I can't take it away because the truth is the thorn you carry in draws you closer to me come on think about it seriously how many how much would you trust God if it wasn't for your thorns how much would you pray if it wasn't for your thorns how much would you know what it meant to endure if it wasn't for your thorns? How would you know how to worship if it wasn't for what you had to deal with week in and week out? How would you know how to say thank you if it wasn't for the things that knock you to your knees every night? The thorn helps you to remember that the Lord is still able to work it out. Now, some of y'all uh, at home almost about to turn me off. Some of y'all about to shut this thing down. Your eyebrows all raised, say, yeah, I hear you talking, Pastor. I don't see the good news in having this situation in my life. You don't know my thorns. My thorns I ain't for the weak and faint at heart. I got sticker bushes in my life. And thorns, my thorns are deadly. These ain't, these ain't rolls. These are knives that I've got carrying with me. These ain't no rose petal thorns. These are potentially fatal, and I've been getting stuck for a long time. Well, can I help you real quick? Because if you just think about it for a minute, as long as you've had those thorns in your life, as you just think about it for a minute, you should have just shouted yourself. Because let me help you, grace is stronger than you think it is. 
Some of y'all still ain't getting it. You have a thorn. You said you've been dealing with it for a while. Your thorn has you broken. Your faith, re in your faith, you relapse. But the good news is you're still here. Despite the thorns in your life, despite your relapses, you're still here. God's grace has still kept you here. Oh, come on. You can go ahead and knock over the counter, the coffee table in your house if you want to. Don't be shy. Just think about the places where God's grace has stepped into your life. Life. Your thorns are for real. They could have took you out, but you recognize your brokenness. But regardless of all that, your brokenness does not limit God. Okay, let me talk about me for a moment. I know the places I've been broken, but God still leads me in the path for his name's sake. I know the places that God has planted me like a tree by the rivers of waters. I get broken, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. I get broken but he still looks past my faults and meets every one of my needs I get broken but I've learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to trust in God I'm broken but he still places my feet upon a rock I've been broken but he still walks with me he still talks with me and he still tells me that I am his own see that's what grace is that whatever your thorn is, it hasn't destroyed you uh, because God has kept you. God is still keeping you even in the uncomfortable places. Paul said a messenger of Satan is tormenting him, but he's still here. It hasn't destroyed him. Oh, y'all need to shout on that. That whatever the devil is trying to do, I'm still here. Can anybody declare that whatever the Satan and Eve Satan has tried to do, I'm still here. It has challenged me, but it hasn't destroyed me. It has tested me, but it hasn't wiped me out. It has stressed me, but it hasn't made me lose my mind. I'm still here by the grace of God that still covers me and follows me from day to day. That's what it is. You got to understand God. You got to, God sees beyond where your thorn is. But here it is. When you feel like you just can't shake it, you have to remember that God helps us to be better through him. See, Paul says, I have sat high and I've done some things that have been pretty major. I've been pretty impressive. I've been pretty significant. I've seen some stuff, but my relapses caused me to remember I'm broken. I'm prone to relapse. There's some things that I just can't shake. I don't fool myself, I'm broken. Paul says it, I don't kid myself. So when things get done, I don't say that I did it. Here it is. So when stuff gets done, I don't say that I did it. I got sense enough to say to God, be the glory. <laughs> that ought to make somebody shout in here. That I know that when God shows up, I know how to say to God, be the glory. I know that it's not me. I know that I, it ain't all me. I know that I've had some help in the situation because what's really happened is I'm being used regardless of my thorn. Uh, that's what Paul says when he says, therefore, I will boast all the more about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Paul says, I'm going to talk about my challenges. I'm going to talk about my struggles. So people will say, how does he do it? And how does he accomplish so much? So Paul can say, it's the power of the Lord that's working with me. Paul wants to say, when you see my thorns, you'll know that I know how to lean and depend on God. See, my strength, my ability doesn't come only from what I can do because of me, but it comes from God despite me. It comes from God despite who I am, despite what I'm struggling with, despite what I'm going through. You see, I can mess it up. I, I can get it wrong. If it were just on me, I could get it messed up. But aren't you glad that it just doesn't fall on you? Aren't you glad that it don't rely on you? But God's power and God's grace can still be sufficient. Paul says, I don't brag about what I can do. I don't pat myself on the back about what I do. That's too easy. That's too simple. That isn't the impressive part. I boast about what I can't do. I talk about where my limits are. I talk about the challenges I have. I talk about what I can't do because what I can't do, God still does through me. What I can't do, 
through, God still shows up and makes a way. And when you struggle with your thorns, when you come to the place where you're dealing with your relapse, then the struggle you, that you have, can't, you can't come or you can't handle. God says, come to me. Don't look like something is wrong with you, but look at it as an opportunity for God to show up. You see, there are people who look like they can't, uh, they can't do uh, their limitations as deficiency. They'll look at their limitations as some type of deficiency. We look at limits as flaws. We look at limits as problems and character issues. That's how the world works, but the world will sometimes limit you based upon what you can and cannot do. But when you see what God can do and what you can't do, it becomes an opportunity to create something new. We look When we look at what God can't do as limitations, when God sees an opportunity to trust him more than we do that we could ever imagine. So when we see him that God is working, not my strength, but God's power in my life. There's some things that I can't get over. There's some stuff that I can't get through. There's some stuff that I can't get around. But because I've got the Lord in my life, I'm able to hold on until the Lord gets me stronger. And when I get through the other side and people say there's no way that he could have done it by himself. There's no way she could have done that and kept her mind. That all I can say is that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I can't tell you where I would be. You got to understand that the thorn thing makes you stronger in depending on the one who really has the strength. So here it is. So here it is. Uh, uh, some of y'all still ain't. Some of y'all still ain't feeling me. Let me put it to in, in the context you can understand. I I remember years ago. I'd be at my grandmother's house. I remember the first time it happened. I was at my grandmother's house, and she was on the phone with one of her girlfriends, and she kept talking about Arthur. She kept talking about Arthur. Yeah, Arthur uh, is here. Arthur is here. I'm dealing with Arthur. She said, talking about her new man, Arthur. And I was like, my grandfather's name is Ernest. Why is she talking about this new man, Arthur? And I learned that, like many saints, she was talking about arthritis. Okay, so Arthur is her new man. So over the years, she would talk and she would say, I'd be in college, I'd call her, or I'd be at the house, I'd see her in different places, I'd call her mama. i said, how you doing, mama? And she would say, oh, Arthur acting up. I'd try to tell him I don't want to go with him no more, but he won't leave me. That's what her thing. I don't, I don't want Arthur no more. I tell Arthur, I tell my man to leave me, but he won't go. Right, and I remember those times, and I remember uh, we were sitting down in the kitchen one time, and she was squeezing her hands, and she wouldn't say anything. She just kept squeezing her hands, and I said, "Mama, you need me to get something?" And she smiled. She said, "No, baby, I, it's just that all off, and no, baby." But I said, "Well," she said, "I said, well, you know, you just gonna sit there in pain." I said, "You gonna sit there with your hands hurting? Just gonna sit there with arthritis?" She said, "Baby," she said, "You can't do nothing about it." So when you can't do anything about it, here it is. She said, all you could do is wait it out. Mm. One Christmas, when we up there and we, we talking and she just shaking her hands and flexing them. I said, yeah, your hands hurt. She said, yeah, it's Arthur. It won't leave me. He just won't go. I said, so mama, you just going to sit there and be in pain? This is what she said. This was shouting me. She said, baby, the pain don't last forever. It comes and it goes. You just need to know how to look forward to the pain being over. You got to know how to wait it out. You just got to know some things you can't do anything about at the moment. Sometimes you just got to say, God says it's going to wait it out and make it better. And if I could leave you with anything today, I know there's some stuff that you're going through. I know there's some stuff that's driving you crazy. I know there's some stuff that's stressing you out, but I just stopped by the tell you that my mama told you to wait it out. Make sure that you wait that thing out because a change is on the way. Some stuff you can't do nothing about right now. Whatever thorn you wrestling with, whatever challenge you have, whatever thing that obstacle that is in your way, my grandmother told me to tell you, wait that thing out because a change is coming. A transformation is about to happen. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their 
strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait that thing out because joy knows how to show up in the morning. I came by to tell you that there's going to be some stuff that you just can't shake. But even if you can't shake it, trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the Lord will redeem you. The Lord will make a way for you. The Lord will keep you and sustain you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy knows how to show up in the morning. Wait it out. Just wait it out. There's going to be some stuff that you just can't shake. But your weakness will be made stronger in the faith of God. Now we understand and we believe that God is still showing up and showing out in our situation. I know this virus, I know this season, I know everything has a ripple effect to it. And for some of us, it's driving us upside down. But just wait it out because change is on the horizon. It ain't going to hurt always. The pain comes and goes. There's some valleys and some mountains, but God is still working it out. So as we continue to worship, as we continue to worship, we want to be mindful. We want to be mindful of those in and be even in our virtual worship an invitation that is extended to you, my brother, my sister. Those of you who are watching, those of you who are witnessing and sharing and worshiping with us who may not have a church home. We don't want to be remiss and saying that there is not possibility or opportunity for time for connection and to be accepted and to give your heart and your life to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do believe that God is still redeeming souls even in this season. That God is still turning lives around and God is still liberating the minds and hearts of his people. So right now as we continue to share we want to let you know that if your heart's desire is to share and be a part of the New Calvary Baptist Church make sure you call New Calvary make sure you give us a call we love to be a church family wherever you are I love to be your pastor we love to grow and share with you and fellowship with you uh, as God would have it to be so so if that is you right now simply extend yourself and say God I'm here God I'm looking forward to being redeemed God I'm looking forward to relationship with you God, I understand that I can't do it by myself. God, I know that this life is hard enough alone and I need someone to walk with me. So God, if you will, accept me into your kingdom. God, I'm accepting you into my heart. I'm looking for transformation. I'm looking for healing. I'm looking to be redeemed. I'm looking to turn my life around and whatever it is that you need to do with me, God, I submit myself to you. I turn my life over to you and I give myself away believing that you're still redeeming lives day in and day out. So thank you. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for touching me. Thank you, God, for leading me, even in this moment. And the people of God celebrate with you as we say amen and amen. We celebrate with you in this moment. We say, God, bless you. Listen, we look forward to worshiping with you next time as we come together. Please put your likes up, put your hearts up for our praise and worship ministry, for our ministers of music, for our musicians who are sharing for our virtual team. Please show your appreciation for them. They are working hard and diligently in this season. So as we prepare, make sure on Wednesday you're experiencing and sharing with your Summer Madness uh, remixes. And we would love to continue to worship and share with you. So let us prepare uh, right now as we go in a word of prayer. God, we love you. God, we thank you for all that you have done. And we pray, God, that you would just continue to keep us. And God, as we depart from this worship experience, never let us be away from your presence. But in all things, we are grateful for your grace. Continue to keep us and walk with us as we give your name the praise. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord place his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. And the people of God who love God together say amen. Amen and amen. We'll see you next time. We love you. We'll take care. Take care of yourself and each other. Until next time, be good. Peace.